What's up guys, Wine Maverick here. Um, so as a millennial, you can tell that my life is pretty much on this little glow box. Um, we have very short attention spans, all things to this. Uh, and a lot of companies and wine, wine producers know that as well. And they're starting to make, or well, they've been doing it for a while, starting to make funky, vibrant labels that are geared towards the millennial who doesn't really care about where the wine's coming from, what region am I looking at, what specific vineyard should I dive into, it's mostly just what jumps at my attention. So today I went to Trader Joe's. Um, it's kind of a rite of, a, a rite of passage for uh, hipsters, millennials to go and, and shop at Trader Joe's and get a lot of bargain for your buck. So with that in mind, I walked into that wine section and I didn't let anything deter me except for the fact that whatever jumped out to me, as you can see, most of these labels are all pretty vibrant um, and interesting, except for the two Trader Joe's brands, but they're in here for a separate reason that we'll cover later. And I mean, come on, wine in a can. I had to just grab this. I have to know what this tastes like. This is so cool, right? So we're gonna jump into that on the Wine Maverick. All right, welcome back. As you can see, uh, this is the lineup of wines. I've made a few cuts because there was some duplicates and varietals and uh, a couple things that I'm just not gonna drink everything. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna go down each wine and tell you why I picked it. And uh, another thing is when I picked these wines, I didn't even look at the price tag. Uh, David had to actually take pictures and remind me once we got home because again, I didn't pick based on that. Uh, I just went for what looked pleasing to me. First things first, Underwood Pinot Gris. This uh, retailed for $5.99. And it comes in a can. How are you gonna say no to that? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, that does not smell good. <laughs> okay, next one. So. Our next wine is uh, the wine that pretty much started it all. This is um, Charles Shaw, Trader Joe's brand, and it's also known as Two Buck Chuck. This is $2.99 Chardonnay. Back in 2005, this wine actually won uh, double gold medals and actually got rated 98 points by, I believe, the wine advocate. So when this happened, everybody was like, oh, we don't have to buy expensive wines anymore. We can just buy a $3 Chardonnay and call it a day. So let's see what we got. All right, this nose is nice and crisp. There's some minerality on it. it actually smells pretty decent. It's... You're getting that minerality on the palate. You're getting some nice uh, citrus, some honeysuckle notes. It's actually very drinkable, not bad. And it's got some crisp acidity, not overly complex. You can tell there's a little bit of like some oak in there, probably wood chips. Again, this is a $3, you know, wine. It's not the most complex thing in the world, but drinkable, palatable, loved it. Let's move on. Sphere, Monterey County, um, Pinot Noir. This one was $6.99. Let's take a look what we got here. Not bad color on the Pinot. Pinot's are one of those grapes that you can usually tell just by looking at the color, uh, what, you know, how intense or how watery or thin it's gonna be. It's not bad, very see-through. Nice stewed cherries on the, on the nose. It's got a little bit like a muddy, funky characteristic to it. Very cool, very Burgundian. That stewed cherry comes through. Some nice strawberry like Monterey likes to, uh, likes to give us. Not bad for a $7 Pinot Noir. That's drinkable as well. Vibrant, fun, fresh, super cool. Let's move on to Greenfin Merlot. I picked this number one because it's a Merlot and I'm, you know, Merlot, buddy, stop moving. It's all right, it's just my dog. But Greenfin Merlot, nobody drinks Merlot anymore. Oh, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any. Merlot. So let's get some Merlots in the mix and let's see what's up. Right, bud? He likes Merlot. He loves, that's his favorite. Merlot's his favorite. This was $4.99. It 
So let's see what we got. Made with organic grapes. Only natural occurring sulfite. So that's, you know, if you're very green conscious, this will probably be a nice option for you. Ooh, interesting. Very interesting though. It's very aromatic. It's uh, almost like forest flory. It's, uh, it's got like some mint to it. Interesting. It's very vibrant. Nice. Uh, soft tannins. Um, it leaves a little bit to be desired, but again, we're mostly cab drinkers at this point, so Merlot is just going to be soft. You're not going to get that, that over-the-top boldness that people expect in cab. But this is easy sipping, easy drinking as well, and it's palatable. Again, I could drink this, and it would actually fool me. I would think this is a more expensive bottle than $4.99. That's very well done. Last but not least, this one really stood out to me. Um, I love very simple labels with, you know, just block lettering, white and black, no frills, uh, but still hip. This is um, coming from a, from a blah, blah, blah. This is coming from a producer known as Charles Smith. Um, he makes a very popular wine, uh, Riesling, known as Kung Fu Girl Riesling. He also makes a Cabernet known as Charles and Charles. Um, he was one of the, he's very well known for starting the whole modernist movement where it's all about the labels and not really diving down into where the stuff is coming from. But this is coming from Washington State. Um, this is actually only non-California wine. Oh no, this is from Oregon as well. So we have one Oregon, one Washington, the rest is all California. Let's dive into this one. Now it says Cabernet on the label. Um, I looked into, the, into, uh, into this wine to see what other stuff might be going on because with a name like Chateau Smith, it sounds like he's trying to go after the whole Bordeaux thing. Um, and sure enough, it is a Bordeaux blend. He's got some Cab Merlot and some Petit Verdot in there. Those are all very Bordeaux-esque uh, you know, blends. The retail on this one is actually uh, the most expensive of all of them. This is $16.99. Again, I didn't go looking for price. So once I had pulled it and looked at that receipt, I was surprised. But what are you going to do? Very nice, it's got good acidity, it's got that boldness, but being from Washington State, Washington State's a little bit of a cooler growing region than Napa or Sonoma, so you're not gonna get that really bold in your face tan, and this is actually more on the subtler side of a Cabernet. It's got those Cabernet notes, but it's not just this big dry in your face uh, uh, Cabernet, but still, again, palatable, drinkable, very enjoyable. Um, of, the, of the whole lot, my favorite actually was the Sphere Pinot Noir, and surprisingly, I did not think I would like this, but this Chardonnay, actually, it worked. It worked. I don't know. It's $3, and it just worked. No wonder so many people will just go and buy it. Not the, you know, not the funnest label. It's no big deal, but it's, it's good juice. So that's my spiel on um, millennial-driven wines and affordable bargain uh, buster wines. So... Uh, loved all of, to be honest, union, the union did nothing for me. This, I smelled it and I tasted it very bland. I'm sorry. Yeah, he doesn't like it either. This, this was not, not good. That was the only thing that I just couldn't really get through. Everything else, loved it. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching the show. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Liberated Wines. They are a uh, project... Uh, from Jackson Family Wines. I didn't include them in the tasting because you don't find them in Trader Joe's. They are available in Whole Foods and other uh, local grocers, uh, but they're doing uh, hip and vibrant labels with a uh, very good vineyard sourcing behind them. Um, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram and uh, Facebook, at The Wine Maverick. Um, I just hit about 1,200 followers on Instagram. Thank you guys for that. Tell your friends, continue to follow me, subscribe to YouTube. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.